from D. James Kennedy Ministries. This is Kennedy Classics. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. The words of the Apostles' Creed provide a strong antidote to an increasingly anti-Christian culture. The Apostles' Creed distills for us the essence of the Christian faith that has been held, believed, and loved by the Church for many centuries. From D. James Kennedy Ministries, the book Knowing the Whole Truth, Basic Christianity and What It Means to You will help you stand strong in your faith in a culture that wants to tear it down. In this classic book from the Deeper Walk series, Dr. Kennedy sheds bright light on the essential Christian truth found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe that it was necessary that we once again declare our faith in the great central and basic tenets of the Christian religion. His compelling stories, personal anecdotes, and stirring testimonies offer solid food for both the mind and the heart. Contact us today to receive your copy of the book, Knowing the Whole Truth, that can only be obtained through D. James Kennedy Ministries. Hello, I'm Frank Wright, president of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Welcome to Kennedy Classics and Happy Easter. In Dostoevsky's classic novel titled The Idiot, the central character is a young Russian prince with a penchant for making simple and straightforward observations. But in the jaded Russian society of the day, his seemingly naive but sincere comments lead some to mistake him for a simpleton. Yet profound and important ideas often turn on simple matters. In one passage, after observing someone die, the prince asks the most straightforward yet weighty question imaginable. Looking at the body of the deceased, he asks, where has he gone? This is, of course, the question of the ages. It was Job's question in the midst of his torment. If a man dies, shall he live again? At some point, this question tugs at the heart of every man, woman, and child. Perhaps because, as the preacher in Ecclesiastes puts it, God has placed eternity in our hearts. So what is the answer? If a man dies, shall he live again? That is the central question that all mankind faces. And it is the central question that Easter addresses. Here is Dr. D. James Kennedy with answers in his message, Life Everlasting. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the 21st chapter of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John. Shall begin our reading with the first verse. May we hear the inspired word of our God. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, 
Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And may God, by his Spirit, speak to our hearts and minds today through this portion of his holy word. May his name evermore be praised. Amen. I believe in the life everlasting. This is the great climacteric of the creed, the final conclusion of all things in our faith, the life everlasting. Without this, then all of the rest of the creed would be meaningless and vain. Indeed, what would it suffice to say that I believe in God, the Creator, if there were no life eternal? Then he would have simply made us that we should rot and corrupt in the grave. What would it mean to say that we believe in Jesus Christ, the divine Redeemer who died and rose again, if we shall die and never rise again? What would it do to say that we believe in the Holy Spirit if we do not believe that that Spirit will raise our mortal bodies? No, without the belief in the life everlasting, all of the creed is devoid of meaning. In fact, without a belief in everlasting life, all of life is devoid of meaning. And that is one of the great tragedies of our modern secular society. You will remember that the word secular comes from the Latin term which means time. A particular type of word for time, however, in Latin, it is that word that describes time when it is conceived in this life only without regard to any life beyond a concept of life that is bounded by the grave and the tomb, a view of life that looks not beyond the mortician's bench, that sees no hope beyond the dark horizon of the grave. And it is that tragic view of life, that secularism that is seeping into the souls of modern men that is depriving their life of meaning and significance and value forever is a very long time. Well, what will it be like for those who belong to Christ, for those who are the redeemed of God? I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man what God hath prepared for them that love him. If you were to skim the brightest sparkles from the summer seas, they would not begin to tell you of the scintillation of the crystal sea of God. If you were to pile up the glories of the most magnificent cities on this earth, one atop of the other, you would not have the haziest notion of what is the spectacular glory of the city of God. Can you imagine where every house is a mansion or palace, where every step is a triumph, where every feast is a banquet, for every covering of the head a coronation, where every year is a jubilee, where every month is an enchantment, where every week is a transport of delight, where every hour is a paradise, and every moment is an ecstasy. This is the heaven of God. Who can imagine it? And who can understand what God hath prepared? Consider the place. There are the new heavens and the new earth where sin shall be no more, where the curse is removed, where entropy ceases. Entropy, the scientific name for the curse of God, where all things decay and disintegrate and go into nothingness. But the day will come when the great angel of God shall reach down a mighty hand and take hold of the wheel of time and shall proclaim, 
time shall be no more. And in that moment, the curse shall be lifted and entropy shall be gone. For you see, entropy is simply a measure of time. If you were to have seen me 30 years ago and then see me today, you would know that time had passed but because of the effects of entropy. Every measure of time is simply a measure of entropy. And when time shall be no more, then the curse shall be gone from the world. From the new heavens and new earth, for that will be the abode of the righteous, as the greatest of theologians have always maintained, not merely in some heaven above, but upon a reconstituted and paradisical earth, throughout a whole new universe will be the home of those who have been redeemed. And then there is the holy city, New Jerusalem, descending out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. What a glorious city that is. What is it like? Well, we're all familiar with the fact that the scripture says that the city of God, the New Jerusalem, has streets of gold, gold which is clear as glass, gold like crystal, towers of crystal gold, spires reaching up into the crystalline skies made of pure and transparent gold. What a magnificent city that would be. We can't even imagine the glory of it. What architectural marvels will be there? Can you imagine that the God who fashioned this entire universe would be outdone by someone like Frank Lloyd Wright? What amazing examples of architecture will be seen in that marvelous t city of God. And the gates are made of a singular pearl, the 12 gates each made of a singular pearl. Magnificent beyond description. There is no dirt or dust or refuse in that city whose streets are translucent gold. No, there is no dirt in those halls of alabaster. In that city of ivory and gold, it is beyond my ability to describe. Also, there will be magnificent parks, for we are told that it is a paradise and paradise comes from the Persian word paradiso, which means an enclosed garden or park. And we shall have returned to that Edenic bliss, and in that park there will be no fear of muggers and no darkness at night, because there will be no night there, for the Lamb will be the light thereof. Ah, the glories of that place have never entered into the heart or mind of man, but I only hope that some dim explanation of what God has told us may indeed ravish your heart with the desire to go to a place which is far better than any we have known here before. And what will the people in that city be like? Well, we know that they will have reached perfection. They will be just men made perfect, justified here and perfected there, perfect in body, bodies that shall never age nor grow sick, bodies that shall never weary nor grow weak, bodies that shall never need sleep, and minds. We are told that the greatest genius uses not 10% of the capacity of his brain. I'm sure that then our capacities will be totally freed and we will be free to use our minds to the greatest extent, to learn more than ever we have dreamed about knowing here. Then we shall know even as we are known. And we shall have all eternity to examine the great mysteries of the universe which God has created. And the wonders of those mysteries are beyond even our conception. All human inventions and creations may be examined to their end, and we may reach an end thereof. But with the creations of God, we have never reached the end of any one of them. And finally, when you hear the bells toll and the choir anthem rise and swell, and you see the multitudes coming from all directions from the holy city to the temple of God, 
to worship Christ, and you'll see him who is the fairest of 10,000. And your heart will be so filled with ecstasy that worship will be the greatest experience in paradise. And you that love beauty can see the rose of Sharon, and you that are inclined toward mathematics can compute the age of his reign. And you, you that are lawyers can listen to him who is the judge of all of the earth. And you that are doctors can listen to the wisdom of him who is the great physician. Yes, we will worship him who has brought us all the way to paradise. There is no end to the employments of heaven, and I am sure that I have not even barely touched the hem of the garment. My friends, the important thing is that we attain to that great bliss which God has prepared. And how do we attain it? Well, that was the thought that filled the mind of a young 16 and a half year old boy some years ago in England, over a hundred years ago now. His name was Charles Haddon Spurgeon. He had only one desire in life, unlike most 16 year olds whose lives and thoughts are usually rather vain and uh, flippant at that time, but his one desire was to attain to eternal life. And he went from church to church and listened to preacher after preacher with little or no help at all. And finally, one cold winter day, in the midst of the snows, he made his way rather dejectedly into a tiny church where there were only 15 people present. Indeed, the snow had kept most people away, and I'm sure that the preacher thought that it was a great disaster for the kingdom of God in that little community that day, for most people had stayed home from worship. But he began to preach his sermon on the text, Look unto me, all ye ends of the earth, and be ye saved, for I am God, and there is none other. And young Spurgeon, with an anxious look, an almost despairing look on his face, listened to the message, trying to piece together what he was saying and to understand how he could have eternal life. But he was having very little success, and obviously the expression of his countenance revealed that fact. And finally, right in the middle of the sermon, the preacher stopped his preaching, and he fixed his eyes upon this young man and pointed at him and spoke to him personally, saying, Young man, you are miserable. And Spurgeon could not argue the point. Now, he had never had a preacher stop his sermon and point right at him and speak to him personally. He sat upright in his seat. And the preacher continued, and you will stay miserable forever unless you heed my text. Look unto me, all ye, all the ends of the earth, and be ye saved, for I am God, and there is no other. And young Charles Spurgeon lifted up his eyes unto the cross under the cross of Calvary where Christ died for his sins. Ah, he said, if only the preacher had told him to do something, he would have done anything. If he had said that for 50 lashes with a cat of nine tails he could have had eternal life, he would have instantly bared his back to receive the blows. But he simply said, look, look, not do, not accomplish, not attain, but the least nothing that anyone could do to simply look. And he looked unto Jesus, a look of faith, and he put his trust in the Savior, and Charles Hatton Spurgeon was converted that day. That dismal, snowy day in England, that day of failure at that little church, but tens of thousand Nay, tens of millions of people have since heard or read the words of Charles Spurgeon, the greatest preacher that ever lived, as those words spread out all over the world, not only England and Europe and America, but all the way to the Isles of the Sea and Australia, people, people eagerly waited for the weekly messages of the great preacher of London. Now, my friend, I would say to you today, I hope that your heart yearns for that water of life, for that life everlasting. And I would urge you now the same way to look unto Christ, to place your trust in him. The gift of God is eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. The most wonderful thing that I can say about all that I've told you today is that all of that paradisical joy which Christ has prepared is yours free. Heaven is free. It was paid for at infinite cost by Christ, but it is offered gratuitously, freely, graciously unto you and can be yours by faith as you simply reach out the hand of a beggar to accept the great gift of a king. Do you have that gift of life eternal? Do you know assuredly that you're on your way to heaven? If not, you have missed out on the greatest thing that can be known in this world, that blessed assurance that Jesus is yours, that foretaste of glory divine, and you will miss out on the joys everlasting, on the glory of paradise, unless you heed that text and receive that gift today. I believe in the life everlasting. Yes, but even more glorious is the fact that I know that it is mine. Do you? May we pray. O oh God, infinite is the tragedy of a single soul that misses paradise. O oh Lord, may no one be in doubt, may no one be unsure, but even this very hour may they say, O oh Christ, thou blessed Redeemer, it was for me that thou hast suffered and died. It was for my sins that thou hast agonized upon the cross. Thou hast purchased paradise for me, and right now, by faith, I accept it as a gift. I do not deserve it. I never shall. But throughout the endless ages of eternity, I shall sing the praises of thy grace. In thy most blessed name, amen. A blessed and happy Easter to you. I'm Rob Pacienza, senior pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, which was founded by Dr. Kennedy. I hope that you just prayed that prayer with Dr. Kennedy surrendering your life to the resurrected and living Christ. If you did, this will be an Easter you will never forget. I encourage you to write down the date because it's your spiritual birthday and it's wonderful to have that reminder of when you began your new life in Christ. And we have a special gift to help commemorate this day. It's Beginning Again, the book that Dr. Kennedy wrote to help new believers grow in their faith we'll send you your copy when you write to our address or call our toll-free number. Just ask for Beginning Again, and may God richly bless you this Easter. As Dr. Kennedy reminds us, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. On this Easter, we celebrate the central claim of the Christian faith, that as the Apostles' Creed says, the third day he rose again from the dead. Because of that, we can celebrate, as the great creed says, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yet recent polls have shown that huge numbers of self-identified Christians don't grasp these basic truths of the faith. The life mission of Dr. D. James Kennedy was to preach the gospel and help people understand powerful, transformative biblical truths like those contained in the Apostles' Creed, which tens of millions will recite in church this very day. In these days when Christianity is becoming more unwelcome in America and when regard for truth seems to be on the wane, it's more important than ever for Christians to be solidified in the central doctrines of our faith. Nobody was better able to take deep and complex theology and make it clear and understandable than Dr. Kennedy. And that's what he does in a book we have just published in our Deeper Walk series called 
knowing the whole truth, basic Christianity and what it means to you. In this book, Dr. Kennedy unfolds each declaration of the classic Apostles' Creed, shining light on each key Christian truth and what it means to you. We will send you Knowing the Whole Truth as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 888-332-3069. Or you can go online to djkm.org. Knowing the whole truth offers solid biblical food for both the mind and the heart from one of the most respected pastors of our age, as Dr. Kennedy discusses this bedrock statement of historic Christianity. And if you're able to give a generous donation of $60 or more, we will also include the audiobook version of Knowing the Whole Truth on a six CD set a powerful companion to Dr. D. James Kennedy's classic book, the audiobook of Knowing the Whole Truth, brings the text alive and makes this vital resource available to you as you go about daily life. Plus, we will also include a three-pack of our Truth in Action Q&A booklet, Did Jesus Rise from the Dead? Perfect to share with friends and loved ones. The historical truth of Jesus' resurrection and the solid reasons for believing in it. That's the book, Knowing the Whole Truth, Basic Christianity and What It Means to You by D. James Kennedy, plus the six CD audio book and the three pack of the Q&A booklet, Did Jesus Rise from the Dead? All as our thanks for your generous donation of just $60 or more. And as you donate, you will be helping us to broadcast gospel truth to a nation that is deeply in need of it. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 888-332-3069, or go online to DJKM. Org. I'm Frank Wright. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Kennedy Classics. Happy Easter to you, and we'll see you next time. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.